Hello there and welcome. Thanks for stopping by. This is Jennifer McGuire. So the past few days, I've been feeling a little blue about the holidays being over and school starting and such. So I decided to spend the day doing some crafting. And for me, the best thing to do is to get out my stamps, my dyes, and my inks and create inky backgrounds and try something new. So this is the video that resulted. I actually use a few different techniques, but I mostly talk about spotlight stamping and masking. Although I'm going to show some fun ways to add details to your stamped images to change a look and they're very easy to do and you likely have the products you need to do so. And the best thing about today's technique is that you end up with two cards for one process, which is always a big win for me. So let's go ahead and get started. I want to mention you could use any stamps for this technique, especially outline stamps, which you'll see. But today I'm going to be using some new products from Simon Says Stamp. This stamp set called Be Kind really stood out to me because I really liked the simple open images. I thought it'd be perfect for this technique. This is a large set, so it's six by eight. So these images will fill up a card nicely. There are also some sentiments that you can build together, although I ended up using sentiments from a different set. Keep in mind there are coordinating dies available for the set, although I don't use them today. For the first set of cards, I use a sentiment from the Simons' Stamp CZ Design Miss You Missy stamp set. This is another large one with lots of Miss You sentiments. I really like the map on the bottom and that you could put two hearts in two different locations and then do the dotted stamp line between them and then stamp something about missing you. There are also coordinating dies even for the sentiment, which I think is really fun. So using these two stamp sets, let's go ahead and do our first pair of cards. I'm going to start with Hero Arts Arctic cardstock, and these pieces are cut to four and a quarter by five and a half. I'm using my Misty stamping tool and my Simonses stamp grid transparency, which will help me to make sure things are centered and straight. I also plan to use a circle die, so I have that laid here just so that I can kind of plan out my spacing, and I'll die cut it later. So I have my one leaf image and my sentiment positioned where I want it. I'll close the door on my Misty to grab those stamps. And now we're ready to do our embossing. So first I'm going to stamp with Versamark ink. And on this one, I'm going to use a white embossing powder and heat set it. Now I'm going to do a couple of these at once. Actually, I'll do some extras. So I'll have them ready for future cards too. I always like to make extras to have those on hand. And I can use those extras for easier techniques too if I wanted. Okay, next I'm going to keep the stamps in the same position, and this time I'm going to silver heat emboss on white cardstock. Again, all of these are cut to four and a quarter by five and a half. I'll end up trimming them down later and adding them to a note card, but I like to start with this basic size so I can get things positioned and trimmed down just how I want them. Now that I have all of my embossing done, let's do our masking. I'm using Gina K Designs Masking Magic. I like this masking paper because it holds up nicely through repeated inkings and stamping, so I can reuse these again. So I'm going to stamp my leaf image, and I just grabbed a light colored ink. You could use whatever ink you want. I use Simon Says Stamp Fog ink. And then I'm going to cut this out. Now this is a pretty detailed image. However, I'm not gonna cut out the thin lines. I'm just cutting out the leaf shapes. I like to use my Tim Holtz haberdashery scissors. I find they're great for fine cutting like this. If you do not like to ma cut masks like this, I will show you a different method that you can do later in this vid video, or you can use masking fluid. And I'll link to a video that shows that here if you wanna check it out. But you can see here, it was only just a few pieces that I had to cut out and it didn't take long. I simply removed the release paper from the back of each piece and pressed it down over the stamped image and now we have all those leaves masked. Okay, now we're going to apply ink over this. You could use any pigment ink or any dye ink here. I use Distress Ink just because I love how these blend. You could use Distress Oxide if you want. This is just what I happened to grab first. I'm applying Distress Ink very heavily and I'm doing three colors, Blueprint Sketch, Mowed Lawn, and Peacock Feathers. And I'm making sure to overlap. You wanna put the ink down heavily and make sure you overlap generously. I'm working on my uh, Waffle Flower Watercolor Media Mat. I like working on the surface because it kind of holds the paper there, so I don't have to get my fingerprints on it. I can let, let it kind of hold the paper as I do the inking. Once I'm done, I just buff the excess ink off the white heat embossing, which has resisted the ink we put on top. 
And now I'm using my tweezers to remove the mask and I'm saving the mask with my stamp set so I can use them again in the future. Okay, now it's time to do our die cutting. I have the circle die that I plan to use and I'm just gonna put a couple pieces of tiny tape on it and then run it through my die cut machine. I'm using my Gemini Junior die cut machine but you could use any machine that you may have. After I've die cut this, I have two pieces that I can use on two cards. The negative space I'm going to use with my silver heat embossed images that are in white cardstock. And then my circle piece, I'm going to match up with one of the other blue pieces I did with white embossing powder. So two different cards made with the same process. But before I assemble these, I wanted to add some details to the leaves of these images. See all those tiny white dots towards the base of each leaf? I did that with a white gel pen. It doesn't take long, but it gives a new look to the stamp set. So it's a great way to stretch your stamp designs that you have. So I just put tiny little dots using a white gel pen. This is the Jelly Roll 10, but you could use any white gel pen you may have. White gel pens seem to work best when you tap them, when you do dots like this, so it works really quickly. So I'm adding kind of a heavy amount of dots towards the base of the leaf and then kind of fading them out. Then I wanna do the same thing with my silver embossing. To do the little dots of silver embossing, I'm using my Quickie glue pen. I do the same thing, I just make little dots, and then I put my silver embossing powder on it. And that glue will hold the silver embossing powder on it long enough for me to heat set. Then I will have little silver heat embossed dots that look like they're part of the stamped image. If you have a Versamark pen, you could also use that here. Versamark pens have an embossing ink in them, so it's perfect for doing dotted embossing images or coloring things in, and I'm going to show you that later in this video. But most of us have a glue pen like this, and I wanted to show you that works great for adding embossing. And here you can see all those embossed dots. Now it's time to assemble our cards, and I wanted some dimension. So I have a piece of white craft foam here, and I have a smaller circle die than what I used before. I'm gonna run this through my die cut machine and it'll cut the craft foam beautifully. This smaller craft foam circle will go behind our bigger inked circle. Now for the other piece, I need the craft foam circle to be bigger. So I'm going to use a slightly bigger die using the same piece just so it doesn't go to waste. I'll run that through my die cut machine and the negative space of this will go behind the negative space of our inked piece. So now I'm just going to glue these all together. I did trim the blue piece here and my inked piece down. They're about four by five and a quarter, and I glued them onto a white note card that's four and a quarter by five and a half. Now I'm gluing the craft foam piece behind it so it's raised. Then I'm going to glue it onto the card and I'm going to line up the images. So the background stamp lines up perfectly with the stamp on our circle die cut. That's the spotlight technique where you make part of the image pop out with more color or from a die cut. On this one, again, we're gonna line it up so that the image on the background lines up with the image by our sentiment. And then I'll glue that onto a white note card. So now we have two cards that were created with the same process. To finish it off, I did a few little white dots here and there on one card, and a few little silver heat embossed dots here and there on the other card. I could have used gemstones for this, but I decided I'd keep this card a little bit flatter than others, so I went for this option instead. So here's a closer look at the two completed cards. This one, I have the spotlight in the center with the inking, where we did the masking so the leaves would stand out. And then we added the white gel pen details to the leaves just to give it a different look. It also added a little bit more interest to this very simple card. And then our second card uses the negative space of that inked piece. And you can see how it still lines up with the background, the silver embossing that we did. So that silver embossing is kind of a spotlight on that sentiment and part of our image. You can also see the embossed details that we created with those dots. Think about it, you could do different color dots with different embossing powders. You could have a field day with that. And it's fun to add that dimension by using the glue pen along with the heat embossing to give that little bit of dimension instead of just using a marker. Before we move on to my next pair of examples, I wanted to show you the envelope that I made to go with this card. People ask why I don't make my own envelopes. Uh, I instead try to find colorful envelopes that are a perfect match. The reason I don't usually make my own envelopes is I don't have a lot of large pieces of paper sitting around and it also takes some time. 
So I'm really excited about this new die set that was just released because it makes envelopes easy to make. It's pretty quick. And you can use 8.5 by 11 cardstock for it. So this is the new Simon Says Stamp A2 envelope die set. There are a few other envelope die sets that they've come out with, and I'm going to show more about them in a video very soon. So stay tuned. I'm just going to go through this quickly here. So this is a six inch wide piece of paper and the die is six, six inches wide. It's also a long die. So you actually have to run it through your die cut machine twice. So I'm running the first part of the die through. You can see part of the die is hanging out and I run it through my machine. Then I'm gonna keep the paper and die taped together and just shift it so that now the other part of the die runs through. So the other end will be hanging out this time. The die is six inches wide, so it's just wide enough to fit through a die cut machine. And there you can see that it worked with my Gemini perfectly. And we have the base of our envelope. Now I can take this and it created score lines for me. All I have to do is reinforce those score lines with a bone folder. And there is the base of our envelope. And again, I'm going through this quickly, but we'll share more about it in my next video. Now I'm going to use the other die from the set. It's a triangle with a flap and I'll cut two with that piece. Now I'm just going to fold along the score line on the edge of the, each of the triangle pieces. And then you have a triangle with a flap on it. So there's two triangles with flaps on them. Now what I find is helpful is to cut a little bit off each of the flaps. So you'll see here I'm cutting a little bit off this side and a little bit off this side. I just find it assembles easier. So now on the flap of these triangles, I'm going to put some strong adhesive. You could use double-sided tape, but I find it's faster to use liquid adhesive. And I'm going to glue this flap to the inside of our envelope base. So I'm just going to line it up right with the edge. That's all you have to do over there and then put something heavy on it so that it stays in position while it dries. Then you can go and do the same on the other side with the other triangle. Now there's only one more step left with this and that is to glue the bottom flap up to the side flaps. So I'm going to put some strong adhesive along these edges here. Then I fold the bottom flap up and our envelope is formed. The nice thing is, is that the large die is smaller than an eight and a half by 11 piece of cardstock. So you could use cardstock you already have, or you could use pattern paper like I did. I also like that it creates an envelope that's a little bit wider than what I normally use. So the card slides in and out very easily. Then you can use whatever adhesive you want to put the flap down, or you could put a sticker on it to close it. So I just wanted to show you that very quickly, but I promise I'll show more about these envelope dies in a future video because I really think they're a time saver. Okay, let's move on to our next pair of cards. With this one, I stepped it up a bit and added some shimmer to the background, but the technique is very similar. And I also, again, added details to my leaves. Now for the sentiment, I'm using the Simon Says Stamp Botanical Heart Stamp Set. This is a large set and that floral heart at the top is giant, such a beautiful image. And I like all the little sentiments in it. There are also circles that you can stamp and then put the sentiment at the center. So it looks like labels that you add to your card. Those kind of things are nice because you can add them to your card anywhere. You don't have to kind of plan it in your design. You just put it on top of whatever you've created. Okay, so I have a piece of four and a quarter by five and a half inch cardstock. I started with green here, but I ended up switching to white. I'm again using a circle die and my grid transparency to plan my card out. Once I have my stamps positioned and straight, I close the door on my MISTI to transfer them to the door and I can remove the grid and the circle. So I'm using white cardstock as I mentioned. This time I'm going to do gold heat embossing. So you can change this up. You don't even have to do heat embossing if you don't want to here, but it is helpful when you do the inking because it resists the ink you put on top. Okay, so once I have a few of those heat set, it's time to do our masking. Now you can see there are a lot of leaves on this image. So what I did is I numbered each leaf with a pencil so that when I went to put them onto my stamped image, I knew exactly where they went. I just went from one to 13 around the image, super easy. And these are very easy to cut out. I like to fussy cut. I know some people don't. If you don't, you could always use a masking fluid or you could use the coordinating die and have a little white halo around your masking. Or you could do the technique that I'm going to show on our third example. But I found these leaves are very easy to cut out because I'm not cutting out the stem, just the leaves. 
Once I'm done, I'm gonna go ahead and put my leaf masks on. Very easy to do since I have them numbered. I start with one, go to two, and then I go all the way around until each leaf has a mask. And I will save these leaves so that I can use them on future cards. Okay, so once I have them all covered up, I'm gonna go ahead and do my inking. This time I'm using Lucky Clover, uh, Shabby Shutters, and Mowed Lawn. And I'm realizing I need to re-ink my ink pads, but instead I just put a little extra muscle into it and I'm able to get a pretty good blend. I'm not looking for a perfect blend here. I'm just getting as much color down as I can. And then I'm going to do my favorite trick. When I don't wanna take the time to blend, I spray it with shimmer spritz. This is a beautiful shimmer that if you spray a few times from above, it helps to blend. Any kind of water or moisture you add onto Distress Inks helps with blending, and this gives shine. I also did a few partial sprays where I only pressed the nozzle a little bit so I would get some splatters. I wanted to have a fun splattered inky background. Once I heat set that, I'm gonna remove each of the masks. Again, I'm going to keep them with my stamp set so I have these masks for future use. Okay, now at this point, I realized I did not like the thank you in gold. I didn't think it stood out enough and I wanted it to be white instead. So I could either white heat emboss on top of the gold, but what I decided to do was just gently scrape away a little bit of the gold embossing. Then I'm going to put my card back into the Misty. I still have my thank you in the same spot and I'll stamp it again with Versamark ink right on top of what I used to have and this time use white embossing powder. I didn't want to start over. I like to figure out ways to fix mistakes and that worked the best. Okay, just like last time, I wanted to add some details to these open leaves. So I decided to use my quickie glue pen to draw lines and then I added gold embossing powder. When using the quickie glue pen, it has a little bit of dimension to it. So you'll get kind of a bumpy extra raised embossing, which I think is really cool. If you want a smoother raised embossing, you could use the Versamark pen, which I'll show you next. But I thought this had a great look for these leaves. So then I'm going to use the circle die and die cut it right from that bottom as I planned. And now I have two pieces for two cards, the negative space with one and the circle on the other. And you can see the fun spotlight look that we get. So I went ahead and I assembled the cards just like I did on the last example with the craft foam. And here are the final results. Here's the first one. I did add some pretty pink posh metallic gold jewels for some sparkle. And you can see the shimmer on that background and the speckled look that we get because I used that spray on my distress ink. And you can see how nicely all that embossing resisted our ink. By the way, on the background of our card, I used a piece of Tim Holtz metallic craft cardstock. I use that as a mat for my stamped piece. I really like these metallic cardstocks. They have like a not super shiny look to them, kind of a little bit of a distressed look to them that's just beautiful, and it matches embossing so beautifully. So I thought it was a perfect mat around our card. So here's the second card. We have the spotlight of the white with the gold embossing in the center. I also added some more of those gold jewels. And you can see all the gold detail that I added to the center of the leaves just to give it a little more interest. I love stamps like this, that you can add more to it or keep them simple or do techniques inside the open areas. Great stamp set. Here's another using the same stamp set. We're gonna do another pair of cards. This time, I decided I didn't wanna cut out masks, so I have a different trick for you, and it just uses heat embossing. Okay, this time my sentiment is from the Simon Says Stamp Love Friendship set. I really like the sentiments in this, the beautiful style. And then the one there that has I and you, and you can put all these different words in the middle. You could actually put multiple words in the middle if you wanted. Such a unique look. And I decided to use the I admire you sentiment on this card. And by the way, all of my leaf images are from that one stamp set that I showed you at the beginning, the Be Kind set. So I've planned out my positioning over a piece of cardstock. I have the leaf, a rectangle die, and the sentiment. This time I decided to do black embossing. So I'm using Altenu Obsidian Black Ink, which is a pigment ink that stamps beautifully. Now you could clear heat emboss this, but I decided to instead use my Brutus Monroe Raven Sparkle Embossing Powder. This is black embossing powder with sparkle in it, which is beautiful when you heat set it. 
You could have also used clear sparkle embossing powder, but I had this, so I decided to use it. Okay, now on another piece, I'm just going to do the leaf alone. So here I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to stamp the black image, then add the black sparkle embossing powder. But I left the sentiment off of this one, because remember how last time I changed my mind on the color? Wanted to make sure I didn't have to do that this time. So I'm gonna go ahead now and do my sentiment in a different embossing. So I'm using my first one as a guide so I could get my sentiment in the same place. Now I'm going to put the piece I just created back in. This time I'm going to white heat emboss it. I want this to be a white sentiment when we put all the ink over it instead of a black. I wanted it to stand out more. So first I'm doing a layer of white heat embossing. You won't be able to see it much, but it'll be there. After I heat set that, I'm going to put that back into the Misty, stamp again right on top the same place with Versamark ink again, but this time I'm going to use clear sparkle embossing powder. That way my white sentiment will have sparkle in it, just like the image has sparkle in it. And yes, I know I'm going overboard with all the different details on the card, but that's the part that I enjoy in this process is all of those details, the things that you can change up to get different looks or make things extra special. You could always keep this simpler if you wanted to. Okay, now instead of doing masking for all of those little leaves, here's my trick. I'm going to color in those leaves with my Versamark ink pad, pen, which is just like the pad, but in a pen form. I'm going to color in the leaves, and that makes that area a little bit sticky. Then you can add your clear sparkle embossing powder, or you could use clear, or you could use white, or whatever you want and heat set that. And then I'll do all of the leaves here. Basically, you're filling in those open leaves with a layer of heat embossing, which will thus resist the ink we add on top. So it's basically creating a permanent mask that we put there. I think this is an important thing to keep in mind. If you don't have a masking fluid pen, or if you don't like to cut out masks, you can always color over an image with Versamark ink pen, then add clear embossing, and it'll make your image clear embossed, but then you can rub over it with whatever inks you want. So there now I have my sparkly leaves that are gonna stay white and sparkly when I apply this ink over it. This time I'm doing picked raspberry, abandoned coral, and must, or, sorry, fossilized amber inks. And I'm blending from one side to the other. Again, I'm putting this down heavily, and I'm making sure to overlap. You could use blending brushes if you want. Now for this example, I decided to step it up a little bit and not only ink over our project, but also stamp on it, just some subtle background stamping. So I'm using the Simon Says Stamp You Matter background stamp, which I just cannot get enough of, and I've put it in my Misty. Now I'm going to take my colorful inked piece, put a little temporary adhesive on the back, line it up straight with my stamp so I can make sure it's centered and straight, then I close my misty door on it upside down. After I do that, I flip it over, press down, and now my paper is held in there, and I can be sure I stamp on it straight. Now you could stamp any ink you want here. I just grabbed a Hero Arts Shadow Ink, but you could use Distress Ink here if you want. And I stamped it in Soft Cantaloupe. Now I'm going to brush away or wipe away any of the excess ink that's on top of our embossing and check it out, all of that stamping is around all the embossing, so we have an inked, stamped background. Next, I use my rectangle die to cut from the piece, and now we have the two pieces, the rectangle and the negative space, to use on two different cards. Now, I didn't go back and add any details to the leaves. If you wanted to, you could do embossing on top of embossing, but I thought the leaves had enough in real life because I did sparkle embossing powder. I did add a few pretty pink posh glossy black jewels here and there, and I use craft foam behind our inked pieces so they stand up. You wanna make sure your image lines up between the ink piece and the white piece so you get that spotlight effect. I hope you can see here the sparkle in the black embossing powder and in the leaves. It really is very impressive in real life. It's just hard to capture in a video. And here's the second card of the pair. Keep in mind that you can do this technique with a lot of different stamps and you likely have something you could try with it. And you could pick a simpler image, you could pick a smaller or bigger, you could even just do the spotlighting without the masking. Lots of different techniques that I put together on these cards. 
I really like that Be Kind stamp set with these different leaf images. I think they can be used in many ways and perfect for techniques. And I thought it was a good way to demonstrate all of this today. If you wanted a closer look at any of the things that I used, I do have them linked in my description below. You can go to my blog for a lot more information. I have that linked too. I always share much more over there than I do in the videos. If you are interested in learning some other similar techniques that might be helpful, I do have two other videos linked here in the middle. I want to say it again, thank you for stopping by. I, I really appreciate the time that you take out of your day to watch these videos, and I hope they're helpful to you. Have a wonderful day. We'll see you soon.